Hi class, in this lecture I want to talk about the uh, cost of home ownership. So basically in this lecture what I want to do is I want to go over um, how a mortgage payment for a house is constructed. And hopefully um, if you're interested someday you guys will all be able to own a home and you can understand where all the payments are coming from. Okay, so, so just some objectives for this section. Uh, we want to compute the monthly payment and interest cost for a mortgage. We want to prepare a partial loan amortization schedule, amortization schedule, and I'll explain what that is. We want to solve problems involving what you can afford to spend for a mortgage. And then the last thing we do is talk about the pros and cons for renting versus buying. Okay, so first off, mortgages. A mortgage is a long-term loan for the purpose of buying a home. Generally, these can be 15, 20, or 30 years in length. Uh, the down payment is the portion of the sale price of the home that the buyer initially pays to the seller. Um, so generally, what you're looking for, like when you buy a house, is a 20% down payment. Uh, the amount of the mortgage, so how much you um, are borrowing, is the difference between the sale price and how much you put down as a down payment. Some companies called mortgage brokers offer to find you a mortgage lender willing to take your loan. For example, when I bought my house, I used a mortgage broker. Uh, fixed rate mortgages have the same monthly payment during um, a certain time of the loan. For example, when I bought my house, I have a fixed mortgage rate. And variable rate mortgages, also known as adjustable rate mortgages, ARMs, have payment amounts that change from time to time depending on changes in the interest rate. Uh, just for reference, you tend to want to avoid these adjustable rate mortgages when you go to buy your first home. Okay, most lending institu institutions require the buyer to pay one or more points at the time of closing. That is the time at which the mortgage begins. So kind of think of it as your um, cost to close on a house, cost to buy it, extra cost to buy it. A point is a one-time charge that's equal to 1% of the loan amount. For example, two points means that the buyer must pay 2% of the loan amount at closing just up front. A document called the Truth in Lending Disclosure Statement shows the buyer the annual percentage rate APR for the mortgage. In addition, lending institutions can require that part of the monthly payment is deposited into an escrow account, and then they use this account to um, pay things like real estate taxes and insurance. Um, you don't necessarily have to have an escrow account. For example, I don't in my house, um, but then my, you know, a lot of my friends do, which is whatever you prefer. All right, so how do you figure out how much your mortgage payment is? Well, the loan payment formula for fixed installment loans is used. So the regular payment amount, the PMT, required to repay a loan of P dollars, right? So I'm borrowing P dollars, paid N times per year, okay, usually 12, right, for the months over T years, all right, and with an annual rate of R is given by this formula, which we've seen in the previous section. P times R divided by N, all that divided by one minus, and then in parentheses, one plus R divided by N raised to the minus N to the T power. Okay, let's do an example. So suppose you buy a house. The, the price of a home is 195,000. The bank requires a 10% down payment and two points at the time of closing. Okay, so the cost of home is financed with the 30 year fixed rate mortgage at 7.5%. Okay, so just so we're clear here, this is P, the amount um, I'm looking to purchase the house from, but uh, forgive me, this is not the P that you're going to borrow because you're going to have to put 10% down. We'll worry about the two points of closing later. Um, the cost of the finance, so my T is 30, 30 years, all right, and I'm going to pay monthly, okay, and I know the interest rate. R is equal to 7.5%. Okay, so let's find the required down payment. Well, so we're telling you that the required down payment is 10%. So 10% of that is uh, $19,500. So the amount of the mortgage that you must borrow, get this, is the difference between the price of the home and the down payment. So your mortgage payment, or the amount that you need to borrow from the bank, you take the sale price, you subtract away the down payment, so 195,000 minus your down payment, you'll have to borrow from the bank $175,500. All right, so to find the cost of two points on the mortgage, remember you have to pay a point is one percentage, so how much you just have to pay extra to close the loan, okay? So you take the amount you're borrowing, if it's two points, you multiply it by 2%, which is 0 0.02 times the amount of your mortgage, you have to pay the bank $3,510, $3,510. 
So the down payment is paid to the seller and the cost of the two points you pay, you pay to the bank. Basically, that's the cost of them issuing you the mortgage, like the extra cost. All right, how much are you gonna pay as your monthly mortgage payment? All right, well, you're borrowing $175,500 at 7.5% for 30 years. So we use the loan payment formula for installment loans, which we learned in the previous section. So how much I have to pay, this, this is the same um, formula basically when we were doing car, car loan, remember? Take 175,500, multiply it by the rate, divided by the 12 times you're gonna pay per year, divide all that by one minus, and then in parentheses, one plus 0 0.075, divided by 12, raised to the negative 12 times 30th power, well, I encourage you on your own, I won't do it for this lecture, but I encourage you on your own to plug this into your graphing calculator and see if you get the same answer. And it looks like the monthly mortgage payment here for principal and the interest you have to pay is gonna be around $1,227 a month. Okay, that's actually you know, not too bad. All right, so let's figure out what the total cost of interest over 30 years is equal to the difference between the total of all monthly payments and the amount of the mortgage. So the total of all monthly payments is equal to the amount of the monthly payments multiplied by the number of payments. So we found the amount of the monthly payments, $1,227. The number of payments is equal to the months in the year, 12, multiplied by the number of years. So over 30 years, okay, 30 times 12, you're gonna make 360 mortgage payments, okay? So thus the total of all monthly payments you multiply this together, 1,227 times 360, okay? You're going to get this times 360. You have to pay, think about this, you have to pay $441,720, All right. Well, how much did you borrow? Okay, well, you borrowed $175,500. So that difference is $266,220. So the total interest you pay over 30 years, okay, isn't this crazy? It's more than the cost of the home. It was $266,220, which is a ton, okay? All right, so I wanna talk about what we call now a loan amortization schedule. So when a loan is paid off through a series of regular payments, it is said to be amortized, which literally means killed off. So although each payment is the same, actually with each successive payment, the interest portion decreases and the principal portion increases. So what I'm saying here is, is when you actually borrow a home or borrow money to purchase a home, the bank actually makes you pay all the interest up front, basically. And then after X number of years, you start paying more towards your principal. So look, a document showing important information about the status of a mortgage is called a loan amortization schedule. And I wanna talk about how you prepare this schedule for the first two months of a mortgage loan. Okay, so um, I'm giving you this piece of information here. <clears throat> I'm telling you that the annual rate was 9.5%. The amount of the mortgage was 130,000. You are making a total of 180 monthly payments. So this is actually a 15 year loan, okay? And this is your monthly payment, $1,375.50. Okay, so we saw that when you have a mortgage, you have a, a, low, a, a, a lot of interest you have to pay on it, okay? So what the bank doesn't do is the bank does not have you, um, the bank does not have you like spread the interest out evenly. What they do is they front load the interest payment, okay? And this is how the bank does this. Okay, so we begin with payment number one. So to figure out how much interest you have to pay on your loan, take how much you borrowed, okay? Multiply it by the rate. For this problem, it was 9.5%, um, so 0 0.09. Multiply it by the time. Well, that's the number of years. Well, it's just one month, so it's 112. This comes to be approximately $1,029.17, okay? Well, we're going back. This is your monthly payment how much you're paying. Well, they're saying, look, you have to pay this much in interest. So the principal, how much money is going towards actually paying off the, the money you borrowed? You take your monthly payment, you subtract the interest that you paid, and your principal is $328.33. So um, this is how much 
is going towards that crazy amount of interest you owed, and this is how much is going down to paying your principal. So after one month, okay, even though you paid $1,357.50, how much you still owe? Well, it's how much the balance, the principal balance is, which is still the $130,000 you borrowed, minus the principal payment. So you still owe $129,671.67. So even though you paid this much, most of it ended up going towards interest. Well, how do you do this um, figuring out for the second month now? So now starting with the loan balance of what we had after we made that small principal payment, we uh, repeat these computations for a second month. So the interest is the principal times the rate times the time. Well, the only thing that changed here is the principal. So the interest you're paying is now $1,026.57. So it's gone down a little bit. You're paying $3 less than interest, which means you're paying $3 more in principal. So your principal payment here, the monthly payment minus the interest. So subtract here, you get $330.93. So now the balance of your loan, take what you previously paid minus this new principal payment. And now after two months, you, have, you still owe $129,340.74 on the loan. Uh, what I will do is um, right above this video in the classroom, you will see a link to an amortization calculator for you so that you can use that um, tool to, do, to have the internet, some internet website calculate this for you so you don't necessarily have to do it. All right, so processing this out, you can see um, this is the payment number. And this is this payment number of the first, second, third, fourth, and I jump to the 30th all the way down to the 180. This tells you how much your payment is going towards interest, how much is going towards principal, and the balance of your loan. So you can see as the number of years go on, your interest is being decreased and your principal is being increased. That's how a mortgage is done. They front load, you pay off all the interest first, and then you start paying more and more towards the actual principal of your loan. Okay, so let's talk about um, what people can afford. So here's the bottom line for most financial advisors. You should spend no more than 28% of your gross monthly income on your mortgage payment. You should spend no more than 36% of your gross monthly income for your total monthly debt. This is include mortgage payment, car payment, credit card, student loans, and medical debt. Okay, so remember this 28-36 rule. All right, so... Um, here's some maximum amounts that you can actually afford. So if your total income is $20,000, they're saying your, your monthly mortgage payment is 28% of that, okay? Um, you know, because you took 20,000 divided by 12 and then times that by 28%. So your mo total monthly mortgage is 467. Your total monthly obligations are 600. And obviously, as the more you make, the more your monthly mortgage payment goes up and your total monthly credit obligations here. Okay, so if you're making $100,000, you can afford a month a mortgage payment of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, $2,333 with a total debt obligation of $3,000. All right, so let's do an example. Suppose that your gross annual income is $25,000. What is the maximum amount you should spend each month on a mortgage payment? What is the maximum amount you should spend each month for total credit obligations? If your monthly mortgage payment is 80% of the maximum amount you can afford, what is the maximum amount you should spend each month for other debt? Okay, and then let's let's round all these to the nearest dollar. Okay, so um, part A, what is the maximum amount you should spend each month on a mortgage? Well, um, if, you, if your gross annual income is 25,000, how much are you making per month? Let's divide that by 12, you get $2,083. So you should spend no more than 28% of this um, on a mortgage payment. So 28% of $2,083 is $583. So that's the max you should spend per month on a mortgage payment. All right, what is the maximum amount you should spend on your other obligations? Um, so again, this is your monthly income. You should spend no more than 36% of your gross monthly income, all right, on uh, monthly debt. So 36% of this is $570. All right, if your monthly mortgage payment is 80% of the maximum amount you can afford, what is the maximum amount you spend each month for all other debt? Excuse me. 
So, all right, your monthly mortgage payment um, is 80% of your max. So 80% of $583. We're saying that you're spending $466. <coughs> Excuse me. On your mortgage payment. So in part D, we saw that your total monthly debt should not exceed $750. All right. So because you are paying $460 for your mortgage payment, excuse me, that leaves the difference or $284 for all other debt. So that's like a car payment, student loans. And your monthly credit obligations, excluding mortgage payment, should not exceed that $284. Okay, sorry about that. All right, uh, let's just talk about the benefits of renting versus buying. Um, so the benefits of renting. So no down payments are required. Uh, so you generally have just a security deposit that's returned to you at the end of your lease. So you don't have to come up with a big chunk of change when you're renting. You're very mobile. When you're renting, you can easily locate, relocate, moving as often as you like, as your lease permits. Uh, does not tie up hundreds of thousands of dollars that might be invested more safely and lucratively elsewhere. Um, most financial advisors agree that you should buy a home because you want to live in it not because you want to fund your retirement. And uh, does not clutter what you can afford um, for your total monthly um, debt with mortgage payments. So you don't have to worry about these huge mortgage payments. Um, another thing may involve lower monthly expenses. You pay rent, whereas homeowners pay mortgage, taxes, insurance, upkeep. And well, let me tell you, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, can, when you rent, you know, you can have amenities like swimming pools, tennis courts, health clubs. Uh, you avoid the risk of falling house prices, uh, does not require home repair, maintenance, and groundkeeping, no property taxes. And renting is generally less costly than buying a home when you stay in it for fewer than three years. Benefits of home ownership, peace of mind and stability, provides significant tax advantages, um, including deduction on mortgage interest and property taxes. However, the 2018 tax laws have changed some of that, so that's changing a little bit. Uh, there's no chance of rent increasing over time. For example, my mortgage payment is fixed for 30 years. It will be the same for the next 30 years. Allows freedom to remodel, landscape, and redecorate. I've done a lot of that. It's nice. And you can build up equity. And equity is the difference between the home values and what you owe on the mortgage. So as the mortgage is paid off, the possibility of home appreciation is a potential source of cash in the form of home equity loans. Um, and then just uh, when looking at uh, seven-year time frames, the total cost of renting is actually more than twice the total cost of buying uh, homeowners who itemize on their tax deductions. So if you're going to stay in something really long, um, owning a home is, is really the better idea.